Here are the key terms for this, uh, this presentation on women and war between 1600 and uh, 1900. By the end of this presentation, you should understand the origins of the modern study of women's history and key terms, uh, gender and patriarchy. And then stereotypes about women and war. Next, the role played by women as logistical support in pre 20th century armed forces. And this is probably the heart of the whole lecture because it's probably the part of the participation of women in war with which you may be the least, uh, the least familiar. And at the same time is the most important uh, way in which women participate in uh, not so much in war, but, as, but in terms of uh, the, actual, the actual fighting, the armies uh, that are involved. Next is the role of women as auxiliary sol soldiers and as soldiers uh, in their own right. Then the importance of women as revolutionary activists. We just talked about that in connection with the Edenton Tea Party and there'll be other examples down the line. Then Dorothea Dix, uh, who was a pioneer uh, in the realm of uh, mental health, providing, help, providing help, help for people with mental illnesses, um, conducting a reform movement aimed at creating asylums for the mentally ill where they could be uh, treated. But she was also important in terms of organizing uh, nurses during the American uh, Civil War. So we wanna talk about her role with, with that. Then Clara Barton and her role uh, as the founder of the American Red Cross. The role of women as deputy husbands during wartime. I'll explain what that means in a bit. And then finally, the role of the military wife. Now let's start off with the social movement from which women's history emerged as a field. This was the so-called second wave of feminism of the 1960s through the 1980s. Now, the first wave focused primarily on gaining for women the right to vote. The second uh, uh, wave of feminism uh, focused on securing equality for women under the law. So there was this sort of for formal uh, political uh, element that continued, but it also focused very heavily on attacking um, debilitating stereotypes about uh, women, um, it, attacking sexism, which in those days was often called male chauvinism, as in the phrase male chauvinist pig. Um, and then expanding options for women, uh, particularly putting into the mainstream the idea uh, that women should be able to have a career outside of the home, which unfortunately had the unintended side effect of ultimately denigrating women who chose to be stay-at-home mothers, what my mother, my own mother, called being a professional uh, homemaker. One of the pioneers of women's history was Gerda Lerner who was credited with teaching the first course on women's history in the United States. Uh, she did this in 1963 and also um, recognized as a pioneer in women's history because she created the first PhD program uh, in women's history. This was at the University of Wisconsin uh, around 1980 when she came there as a, as a professor. What I wanna do now is show you a brief uh, interview by Gerda Lerner or about Gerda Lerner uh, done late in her, in her life where she talks about the origins of women his, women's history. When I started uh, working on women's history about 30 years ago, the field did not exist. It was not recognized. Uh, people didn't think that women had a history worth knowing. Uh, the professors that taught me thought it was an exotic specialty and I was wasting my talents uh, pursuing it. And 
Uh, for women, the uh, looking back to the past has usually been painful because what we would, would learn would be an absence. We would learn that women had not done this and they had not done that and that essentially uh, according to the traditional view women had contributed very little to mm -hmm. the making of human society and even less to the making of the intellectual product mm -hmm. of Western civilization. Now I knew that not to be the case. I knew that that was false. I've been working for 30 years in the field of women's history and the fact is that women do have a history, that they have participated in making history, but that we have not until very recently uh, recognized that. And that has created enormous problems for society as a whole, for both mm -hmm. men and women. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the problems are that it has given women a totally wrong impression of their connection yeah. to the work of the world. You know, when as I was preparing for this interview, I, I was reading your book with my wife today, and she asked me, she said, imagine what it would be like for you as a male if all the history you read was about the great achievements of women, that you never read about exactly. any great male achievements. And I have to say, I was floored. I had never considered it in that light. And that is one of the worst effects of this omission, that women have no heroines. Uh, I always cite as an example that the only heroine that women of my generation and up to my generation uh, grew up with was uh, Joan of Arc. Mm -hmm. And we all knew how, what <laughs> end she came to. That's not a very <laughs> desirable model. Mm -hmm. And there was always Molly Pitcher, who in fact is a mythical figure, uh, who hands the water to the men. So the handmaiden, yes. that's all. Now, all of this is false. Yes. The record is wrong that ha we have uh, handed down. And I, I, let me just say a word to uh, the comment you just made about your wife. Uh, the effect on men has been very bad, too, mm -hmm. of the omission of women's history, because men have been given the impression that they're much more important in the world than they actually are. And that's not a good way to uh, become a human being. Mm -hmm. It has fostered illusions of grandeur in every man that are unwarranted. Mm -hmm. If you can think as a man that everything great in the world and in civilization was created by men, then naturally you have to look down on women. And naturally you have to have different aspirations for your sons and for your daughters. And I don't think that's good for men either. So it was that problem that concerned me when I undertook mm -hmm. uh, the research for these two books. Mm -hmm. And certainly uh, there are many groups of people who have been oppressed throughout human history, but the fundamental division of the human race between men and women and the, the oppression, uh, the neglect of women that occurs across all cultures and all levels of, of society is, is, is very, very deep. And in, in your work you, you point out that it, it goes to the very earliest beginnings of history itself. Well, you see, I, uh, I asked myself the question, which I think uh, most women ask themselves <coughs> sometimes in their lives. How come that we did not even know <coughs> that we were subordinated for such a long time? Other groups that were subordinated in history, peasants, uh, slaves, uh, colonials, any kind of group, that ha uh, ethnic minorities, mm -hmm. all of those groups knew very quickly that they were subordinated and they uh, developed theories about their liberation, about their rights as human beings, about what kind of struggle to conduct in order to mm -hmm. emancipate themselves. But women did not. And so that was the question that I really wanted to uh, explore. And in order to understand it, I had to understand really whether patriarchy was, as most of us have been taught, a natural, almost God-given condition, or whether it was a human invention coming out of a, diff uh, a specific historic period. Mm -hmm. Well, 
in creation of patriarchy, I think I show that it was indeed a human invention. It was created by human beings. It was created by men and women at a certain given point in the historical development of the human race. It was probably appropriate as a solution for the problems of that time, which was mm -hmm. the Bronze Age. Mm -hmm. But it's no longer appropriate. Mm -hmm. all right? And the reason we find it so hard to, and we have found it so hard to uh, understand it and to combat it, is that it was institutionalized before <coughs> Western civilization, <coughs> really, as we know it, yes. was, so to speak, invented. Mm -hmm. And the process of creating patriarchy uh, was really well completed by the time that the idea systems of Western civilization mm -hmm. were formed. Long before the Bible was written. Exactly. Long before Greek philosophy. Greek philosophy, Greek science, <coughs> and the Bible are the mainstays of the idea system on which Western civilization is founded mm -hmm. and which p p uh, pretend or uh, assert that they explain the world to us, right? Mm -hmm. These systems all took the subordination of women for granted because at the time they were created, that subordination had already been mm -hmm. completed. Now, there are two key terms that are crucial for, uh, uh, for understanding women's history, women's studies, but more specifically, what we're going to talk about uh, in terms of the place of women uh, in what was going on with war.